Leviticus 25 describes and mandates the practices of the Yovel or Jubilee year. You shall count off seven weeks of years, seven times seven years, so that the period of seven weeks of, so the period of seven weeks of years gives you a total of 49 years. Then you shall sound the shofar loud. In the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, the day of atonement, you shall have the shofar sounded throughout your land. And you shall hallow the fiftieth year. You shall proclaim release throughout the land for all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you. Each of you shall return to his holding, and each of you shall return to his family. The sounding of the shofar, Vavarta shofar trua, is one of the essential practices of the Yovel. Perhaps surprisingly, Without the sounding of the shofar, the 50th year is not Yovel. As Maimonides co codified in his great code of Jewish law, the Mishneh Torah, laws of Shemitah and Yovel, three things are mandatory for the Yovel, sounding the shofar, freeing the slaves, and returning land to its original owners. In this, Maimonides follows the opinion of sages in the Talmudic tractate Rosh Hashanah 9b. In that discussion in tractate Rosh Hashanah, the Talmud clarifies that the purpose of the sounding of the shofar is explained in the next verse, Ukratem dror ba'aretz, and you shall proclaim dror throughout the land. Dror can only mean one thing, the Talmud explains. It can only mean chirut, freedom or liberty. So the meaning of the shofar itself is a call to freedom. Maimonides, following Mishnah Rosh Hashanah, says something slightly different. The shofar of Yovel and the shofar of Rosh Hashanah, New Year's, are the same in every respect. What then does the shofar of Rosh Hashanah mean? Maimonides explains that in the Laws of Repentance. Quote, Even though the blowing of the shofar in Rosh Hashanah is a biblical decree, it hints at something. That is, wake up sleepers from your sleep, and slumberers arise from your slumber. Search your ways and repent and remember your Creator. Those who forget the truth amidst the futility of the moment and are infatuated all their years with vanity and nothingness that will not help and will not save, examine your souls and improve your ways and your motivations. Let each of you abandon his wicked ways and his thoughts, which are no good. For Maimonides, the shofar sounding on Yovel is equal to the shofar sounding on Rosh Hashanah. Therefore, there is also an aspect of awakening on the Yovel. As the Yovel shofar sounds throughout the land, it announces that slaves are freed and lands return to their owners. It announces that those who have been asleep must awake from years of vanity and nothingness and improve their ways. It was not coincidental, then, that the sounding of the shofar for Yovel happens on the tenth day of the seventh month, on Yom HaKippurim, the Day of Atonement. The shofar frames the Yovel as a time of awakening. The accumulation of land, the ownership of other people, these are all vanities and nothingness. These are all the deeds of those who are not awake to the truth, the just. The shofar is a blast of righteous awakening. Some 30 or 35 years ago, I went to an art exhibit at the Israel Museum in Jerusalem. It was the exhibit of a photographer who accompanied the border patrol as they patrolled the occupied territories. This was before the first intifada. I was living in Jerusalem, having made Aliyah, served in the army, been in the 82 Lebanon War. Like many Israelis, I was completely unaware of what the occupation was. Like many Israelis in the peace camp, I supported the idea of trading land for peace as we referred to it then. I supported the idea of a Palestinian state. However, like most Israelis, I had no idea of the way the occupation happened. It was still normal to go from Jerusalem to Bethlehem or Jericho without much fear. On some level, we knew that the safety of the Jewish population of the territories and the Jewish Israelis who traveled through the territories was guaranteed by the Israeli army's presence. However, we all chose not to know how that presence presented itself. What were the day-to-day -day mechanisms of occupation? All this was foreign. And then the pictures, black and white, almost all nighttime, with short descriptions. The pictures were stark. Soldiers of the Border Patrol inflicting beatings on Palestinian men and boys. The brutality was shocking to me. It was hard for me to describe the feelings I had then. The only way I could describe it was as a wake-up call. 
I'm sure that others were aware of what was going on in our name. I was not. I was perhaps willfully ignorant. However, that exhibit was the moment in which I can no longer slumber. I was awake and had to figure out what that meant for me politically and morally. The most painful thing about that story for me is that it happened over 30 years ago. This was before David Grossman's The Yellow Wind, before the first Intifada and the second Intifada, the unilateral withdrawal from Gaza, the on-again, off-again war with Gaza, Oslo, Camp David. Everybody knows now, everybody should know, the daily quotidian humiliations, insults, brutality, and violence of the occupation. The checkpoints and random searches and nighttime raids that make life intolerable. The ongoing, incessant violence and counterviolence. Nobody's hands are clean. But are our eyes open to what it means when we say, nobody's hands are clean? It is 50 years, Yovel. It is impossible not to know that the, rea what, that the reality of the Israeli occupation of Palestine is brutal and inhumane. Fifty years. Wake up, sleepers, from your sleep, and slumberers, arise from your slumber. Search your ways and repent and remember your Creator. Those who forget the truth amidst the futility of the moment and are infatuated all their years with vanity and nothingness that will not help and will not save, examine your souls and improve your ways and your motivations. Let each of you abandon his wicked ways and his thoughts, which are no good. We all must sound the Yovel Shofar. We must awaken. We must demand that the occupation end.